All right, guys, on this week's episode, we are going to be taking a comprehensive look at guitar amp simulation software along with cab impulses. And I'm going to be taking you inside of Reaper and showing you the live output feature, which is going to allow you to export your tracks in real time. That's all coming up on episode number 81 of Limitless Studios TV. All right, guys, this week we are going to be doing a rundown of amp simulation software. Um, a lot of guys have requested it for a long time. And uh, this week we're going to be uh, showing you how to set it up and some advantages and disadvantages. Um, but first we're going to go through, uh, there's a couple different types of simulation. The first is going to be a hardware simulator. And that's going to be like a pod or um, an Axe FX, um, where you actually have a physical unit that it's doing the emulation inside of it. So it's the, not the PC doing it or the Mac doing it, it's the actual unit that you purchase is doing the emulation of the amp. The second type is going to be a software simulation. And that's going to be a plug-in that you download or even a standalone piece of software that you buy. Um, and when you install it onto your computer or install it into your plugins folder, it's going to run off the processing of your computer instead of off the processing of an individual hardware unit. So uh, we're going to just do a rundown of some disadvantages and advantages. Yep. With both these types of amp simulators, you're going to have your advantages and disadvantages. So we'll go ahead and start with the disadvantages first. Uh, generally, these amp simulators aren't going to sound quite as realistic as a real amp and cab mic'd up and ran through an audio interface. And it's also a lot harder to capture your dynamics in your playing, especially when you're not using a DI box of any kind. Um, there's also a lack of tonal diversity when you're using amp simulators. Generally, a lot of the amp simulators have the same type of characteristics and kind of a plastic, almost sounding palm mute, if you're doing palm mutes in like metal music, for example. But uh, that's pretty much all of the disadvantages, so I guess we'll go ahead and go to the advantages. Yeah, so uh, there's quite a few advantages when you're using some sort of a simulation for your guitar or your bass. Um, first of all, it's very quiet. So you can plug your guitar straight into your interface or your DI box and you're not going to be having, you know, a massive half stack, you know, or even a little practice amp, um, you know, blaring out sound if you, you know, you live in an apartment or somewhere where you want to be really quiet. You could put on headphones and the only thing people are going to hear are the strings on your guitar or on your bass. Um, generally, it's really easy to set up, you know, all you have to do is take your guitar cable from your guitar, plug it into a DI box or even straight into an interface and uh, either boot up your software or you know run it into your hardware simulator. Um, the price is going to be really good you know even on the hardware simulators you know they're much cheaper than a really nice um, all tube amplifier um, and then there's also quite a few free um, downloadable plugins that you can use for amp simulation. Um, it's very good for if you're doing practice or you're trying to write demos so if you, you know, that goes sort of with, you know, how quiet it is. You're able to write music without disturbing, you know, your neighborhood. Um, it's also non-destructive. And what I mean by that is when you record your DIs, your DIs are not, actual ch are not changed into an actual wave file with distortion on it. So you can actually, you know, turn your effects off inside of your amp simulation software and then you just have the straight DI and you can use that DI to run back and reamp later, send it off to a place to get reamped or um, you know wait until you're actually in a recording studio but you have your DI's and you can reamp them there with a real amp and you don't have those disadvantages that we listed. Yep. And finally it's also really good for uh, monitoring uh, your DI's so going back to where you could you know take your DI's to a studio have them reamped. It's very good for monitoring your playing um, while you're in the recording stages. Yep. And with these amp simulators, to use them, you're going to need a few pieces of gear. And the first thing you're going to need is, of course, a guitar. Make sure your guitar has new strings put on and it's properly set up and tuned. Uh, that's really important. And also make sure your player is pretty, pretty good at playing guitar, nice and clean. Um, next, you're also going to need an audio interface. Um, pretty much any of them will do. All you need is, um, well, a quarter inch input for your guitar, or if you're using a DI box, you'll also need a, a mic input. And we recommend having a DI box, of course, because the playing is much more detailed. It 
captures your uh, dynamics a lot better. As we mentioned earlier in the disadvantages, uh, you can kind of get past a lot of that dynamics issue by using a DI box. And of course you'll need an amp sim. There's several free, out, free ones out there. We'll probably put a link to some of the few that we know of down below in the sidebar. Um, one of them, I think the one that we're gonna be using for the clip is, um, the, what was that called? It's called the lec oh, uh, lecto. lecto. Yeah, yeah. Lecto. lecto. And um, to use these uh, amp sims, uh, the amp sims by themselves are not gonna sound very good at all. It's just gonna sound like a big distorted mess. And so what you're gonna wanna put after the amp sim is an impulse loader. And we'll also put links to those as well below. And basically what that does is you load an impulse file into the impulse loader and that simulates the sound of the amp simulator going through an actual cabinet. And that makes it sound much more realistic. Um, and of course you'll need the impulses to load into the impulse loader and um, I've actually made a couple impulses for you guys out there and we'll put links to those in the bottom. So I guess now we're gonna go ahead and go into uh, Reaper and show you how to actually set up and use an amp sim with an impulse loader. All right, so uh, we're inside of Reaper now. Um, you can, this is obviously gonna translate to uh, your specific audio workstation software, um, but we're just gonna go through we already have a project set up here, and this is um, the project for a clip that we're going to show you at the end and let you listen to the finished product. But right now we're just going to go down the signal chain of all the effects that you'll need to uh, set up your um, audio software uh, simulation. So go ahead and open up our, uh, all of our different effects, and we'll do a, a quick rundown of each of the things that we have um, on each of these tracks. Yep, and all these tracks are the exact same. They all have the same settings, so there's no need to show you but more than one. Uh, the first thing we've got here is an overdrive, and I'll post a link in the sidebar to this plugin. And basically what we're using this to do is uh, basically boost the signal from your guitar before you run it into your amp sim. Uh, a lot of people do this for guitar amps as well, and it happens to work quite well. Uh, the next thing we got is the uh, Lecto plugin, and again, like I said earlier, we'll put links to all these things in the description below. And basically, here's our settings for the uh, guitar amp sim. These are not going to really work for your guitar because different guitars sound different, obviously. Um, but the next thing we got here is the impulse loader itself. And basically what you're going to do here to load an impulse is you're going to go down to this file button, click it, and then go to your directory where you have your impulses saved. And um, basically select which impulse you want. I've already got one selected, so I'm just going to go ahead and cancel it. But if you were to select one, just double click on it, or you can click on it and then hit open. And then uh, that's basically all you have to do in here. So next thing we've got is an EQ. And we're basically just using a low pass and high pass filter. We're cutting off everything below 80 hertz and everything above 12 kilohertz. And we also have a little trick here we're gonna show you. Um, a lot of amp sims, pretty much all of them that we've used, have had this nasty frequency around the 6K range. And basically what you can do to remove that is just add a small Q EQ and that will pretty much get rid of all that nasty sound but it won't affect your overall guitar sound too awful much so I guess that's pretty much it for the signal chain so we're gonna go ahead and let you listen to the final product of this specific track with drums and bass included
All right, guys, so uh, we're back in Reaper here, and I'm going to show you a little bit of the live output feature that's inside of uh, Reaper. Basically, what it's going to allow you to do is come up here and hit Save Live Output to Disk, and it's actually called Bouncing. And uh, what it's going to do is when you click that button, it's going to bring up your, you know, where you want to save it and uh, what format you want to save it in. And then when you click start, it's going to start recording. And what it's recording is anything that you do that's pushing out audio inside of Reaper. So basically, when I click start, it's now recording. Um, down here, you can see it's actually counting up by seconds how long it's been running. And it's actually recording this into an audio file. Right now, it's recording silence. But if I go ahead and click play on this audio track, it's going to play a little bit. And it's actually now recording um, the audio that's playing. But when I hit stop, now it's not recording. But it's now it's recording silence. It's recording all of this in real time. So now I can move over and record a different spot. And this is all going to end up in one file. So it recorded that, and now it's recording silence. And when you want to stop it, you just go back up here. And now the saving has been completed. And when you go out to your actual test or your file, it's actually going to it has silence, and then it's going to play when I started to hit play, which was a while in here. So it's playing the audio in real time. And now it's more silence until I hit the different spot in the recording. So that's kind of a cool feature. Um, it's sort of like screen capture software in a way. Um, it's recording the live output. So hopefully you guys can find a use for that, and we will see you guys next time on Limitless Studios TV.